Here's a question for you. Why do some atoms on the periodic table decay and how exactly does that decay process work? Here I think we have the most beautiful element on the periodic table. This is a diamond, which is carbon 12. We'll talk about what the 12 means in just a second. In its crystal form, in a crystal lattice, it makes what we call diamond. Looks a little bit different than the other form of carbon, which is charcoal, arranged haphazardly and doesn't look nearly as beautiful. Now I'm using this as an example to illustrate. We have carbon, the most stable form of carbon is said to be indefinitely stable. It doesn't really decay over time periods that we can study, all right? And that's because it's perfectly imbalanced in the nucleus uh, between the protons that are in the nucleus and also the neutrons in the nucleus. So on the periodic table, carbon is element number six. That means there's six uh, protons in the nucleus. There's also, typically for the stable form of carbon, six neutrons in the nucleus. Remember, these protons are all positively charged and they all want to repel each other in the nucleus. So here's another cartoon here. We have the nucleus, we have protons and neutrons, but again, the protons are all repelling each other. So how is the nucleus uh, stable at all if the protons are pushing off with, remember, the electric forces are millions and millions of times stronger than gravity. So how is it possible the nucleus stays together? Well, inside of these protons and neutrons, the current modern theories say that we have something even more fundamental called quarks. The strong nuclear force is a force of nature much, much, much stronger than the other forces, but it only acts over very, very short distances. In fact, you can imagine these quarks inside of these neutrons and protons emanating a strong nuclear force that kind of leaks outside of the boundary of these little balls that we have there, a little tiny, tiny bit, a fraction of the nucleus diameter. And so that strong force is able to hold the nucleus together as long as the nucleus is not too physically large. Now, the strong nuclear force emanates from the protons, and it also emanates from the neutrons. So for every element on the periodic table with a different number of protons in the nucleus, there is an optimum number of neutrons to add enough stabilizing strong nuclear force to hold everything together. In the case of carbon, that number is six protons and six neutrons, and so it's indefinitely stable. But for carbon-14, we have extra neutrons in the nucleus. They provide some extra strong force, but the nucleus is too big for it to envelop and hold it all together so that form of carbon isotope is unstable. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.